Hello there, I am Paul Belflam and this is Industrial Organization. This presentation is about simple Kuno mergers. What we want to do is to analyze the profitability of mergers between symmetric firms in a Kuno industry. You can find background information in the textbook in sections 15.1.1 and 15.1.2 in the textbook. Okay, so let's start with the, the simplest uh, situation where only two firms merge in a corner industry. So firms are choosing quantities as a strategic variable. And imagine that firms sell exactly the same product, what we call a homogeneous product. Well, if there are only two firms in the industry, it's very easy to see that a merger between these two duopolists is profitable. And why is that so? Because the profit if firms merge and so act as a monopoly, so let's denote it pi m or pi with one in firm in the industry, well, this monopoly profit is greater than the total profits if there are two firms in the industry. So pi 2 here is the profit of a duopolist. If I multiply it by 2, I've got a total profit when there are two firms in the industry. And so if the monopoly profit is larger than twice the duopoly profit, then duopolists can do better if they merge. Okay, they gain by playing as a monopolist and they make together as a merged firm a higher profit than the sum of profits they were making before the merger as duopolists. Okay, so in an industry with two firms, merger to monopoly is always profitable. Okay, now this is, of course, a very specific situation, and we want to be able to say more about mergers in Kono industries. Okay, and what we will discuss now is that if a merger falls short of a merger to monopoly, so if there are firms outside the merger, then it's not clear whether the merger will be profitable. Okay, so what we want to do here is to compare the profits after the merger and before the merger. Okay, so we want to see whether firms, if they merge, will make together with this merged entity a larger profit than the sum of profits they were making before the merger when they were separate. Okay, and for now, this, this is why we talk about simple corner mergers. We assume that the merger has no effect on the cost of production. Okay, so after merging, Firms have exactly the same cost as before, and we assume a constant marginal cost. Okay, so when we say no synergy effects, this is what we mean. There is no reduction in costs for the merged firm. Okay, so it's as if the merger was equivalent to buying a firm and closing it down. Okay, and in a sense, and you will see this in a minute, this is not very different from what we analyzed before when we were talking about a cartel. Okay, the cartel was just coordinating the decisions about quantities and there was no effect on costs. Well, in this case of a merger without synergies, we have exactly uh, the same situation. The difference, as we will see, is that when we were analyzing uh, the formation of a cartel, uh, we were assuming that the cartel was formed by the firms willing to be in the cartel. Okay, here this, things will be different because we will assume quite uh, realistically that if the merger's negotiation fail, well, firms remain separate. Okay, it's either all firms negotiating for a merger forming the new merged entity or all of them st staying separate. Okay, so let's come to that and let's try to analyze now mergers of two firms, but in a larger industry, in an industry that counts more than two firms. Okay, well, what matters here is to understand what the other firms do. And by other firms, I mean those who don't merge. Well, what is clear is that these other firms will always gain from the merger. They are quite happy to see other firms in the industry merge. Why is that? Well, because the merging firms, and this is exactly the same intuition as with the cartel, the merging firms will reduce the uh, competition that was existing uh, between them before the merger. Okay, so they internalize their previous rivalry and how do they do that? Well, they will reduce the quantity that they will produce. So the quantity after the merger 
is lower than the sum of quantities produced by the merging firms before the merger. Okay, and so there is a reduction in quantity by these merging firms, which is beneficial for the other firms. Why? Because if there is a lower quantity on the market, the price will be higher, and this is something that the other firms can benefit from if they continue to produce the same quantity. But actually, they will not produce the same quantity. We know that in the corner uh, market, firms have reaction functions with a downward slope, which means that when one firm increases its quantity, the other firm decreases its quantity. In the present case, this is the opposite that happens. The merged firms will decrease their quantities. And so the outside firms, the firms outside a merger, will react by increasing their quantities. Okay, remember we have strategic substitutes in a corner industry. Okay, now what does it tell us, tell us about the profitability of the merger? Well, because as a response to the merger, the other firms increase output, that has a negative impact on the profit of the merging firms. Okay, so we've got two effects. Uh, we will come back to this, but we already understand that there are two effects uh, for the profitability of a merger. A positive effect is that the merging firms coordinate the decisions uh, and so increase the profits for a constant reaction of the other firms. But, this is the negative effect, the, the other firms are not uh, are changing their behavior, so it's wrong to suppose that they wouldn't change their behavior. And actually, the outside firms, they change their behavior in a way which is detrimental to the profit of the merged firms. Okay, so before uh, we look uh, precisely at that, we can already record this lesson. Under Kuno competition, mergers of two firms are unlikely to be profitable if the market is fragmented, but they are more likely to be profitable if the market is concentrated. Okay, so in other words, uh, as we saw on the previous slide, if the market is already very concentrated, in particular if there are only two firms in the industry, well, the merger to monopoly will be profitable. But if, if there are more than two firms, um, and especially if there are many firms, well, a merger with two firms is facing a large number of outside firms, and these outside firms react in a way which is detrimental for the profit of the merged entity, which explains why, in a fragmented industry, a, a merger between two firms is very unlikely to be profitable. Okay. Now, we, we want to be a bit more precise about that. Um, the, the previous argument was made in a very specific situation, and we were actually making six implicit assumptions that we want to relax now. Okay, so we were assuming that only two firms merge. What happens if more than two firms merge? Okay, we're assuming that there is no increasing marginal cost for production or that the merger was not affecting the efficiency of production. We also assumed that only a single merger was possible and we were freezing the size of the industry, uh, assuming that no additional firm could enter and also we were assuming that firms are co competitors. Well, in the rest of this presentation, we relax the first assumption and see what happens, uh, keeping all the other assumptions, but what happens if more than two firms merge. Okay? In future presentations, we will relax the other uh, assumptions. Okay, so what happens if more than two firms can merge? Okay? Well, the, the effects we were mentioning before remain. Okay? On the one hand, the firms that merge reduce the rivalry among them, which is beneficial for their profits. Okay? But on the other hand, the firms who don't merge react to the lower quantity of the merged firm by increasing their own quantities, which reduces the profits of the merger. Okay? And so you understand that the balance will depend on these two opposite forces. Okay. Now, the second effect, which is negative for the profitability of the merger, so the reaction of the outside firm, firms, uh, this effect becomes larger the more outside firms there are. Okay. Or to say it in the other way around, this negative effect becomes smaller if there are few outside firms, which is to say if there are many firms merging. Okay, so this is what is said here. The first effect, the effect of internalizing rivalry, 
this first effect is more likely to dominate if there are many firms in the merger, which imposes, which implies, sorry, that the outside firms are in a small number. Okay, so this is uh, what we have summarized in this lesson here. A merger between multiple firms in a Kono industry can only be profitable if the market becomes highly concentrated as a result of the merger. Okay, which is to say, the merger needs to have sufficiently many firms in it to be profitable. Okay, so let's establish this analytically in a simple example with linear demand. So P of Q is equal to A minus Q. And linear costs. So the cost of production is equal to C for all firms. And the merged firm isn't reducing its cost. We will come to this later, but for now, we suppose that there are no synergies. Okay, and so assume that there are n firms in the industry, n corner competitors, and let's look at what happens if k of these n firms are merging. Okay, and the question we ask, what is the condition for this merger of k firms to be profitable? Okay, well, the condition for profitability is quite simple. You need to make sure that the merged entity will make a larger profit than the sum of the profits the K firms were making before the merger. Okay, which is to say, it's exactly the same thing, that um, what each firm will obtain in the merger, which is 1 over K of the total merger profit, is larger than the profit these firms were making before. Okay, so we take the first uh, condition uh, here, we want the profit of the integrated firm, the merged firm, to be at least as large as k times the profit uh, before the merger. Okay, so pi Ea is the profit before the merger. Now, we have got Kuno competition, okay, and what matters is the number of firms before and after the merger. Okay, so after the merger, this is this profit here, there are n minus k plus 1 firms left on the market. Okay, n minus k outside firms, outside a merger, plus the merged entity. Okay, so this is what happens if k firms out of n merge. Now, I refer you to a previous presentation where we use uh, the generic formula of a profit at the Nash equilibrium of a corner game. Okay, remember that we divide by the number of firms in the industry plus 1. Okay, so if there are n minus k plus 1 firms, we divide by n minus k plus 2 to the square. Okay, so this is the profit of the merged entity after the merger, of course. And I repeat, in that case, after the merger, there are n minus k plus 1 firms on the market. And this has to be compared to k times the profit firms would make if they remain separate. Okay, so if the negotiation for the mergers uh, fail, then no merger takes place, meaning that all firms remain separate. And in that case, there are n firms on the market. Okay, so that's why here we divide by n plus 1 square, n being the number of firms. Okay, so this is the, the, the formula for the merger between k firms to be profitable. Now, if we you develop this um, inequality, you can rewrite it in this way. Okay, I'll let you check uh, that this is correct. And so you need to find the value of k that makes this uh, quadratic form positive. Okay, k minus 1 being positive, we need this bracket, bracket term here to be positive. And you can check that this is equivalent to k being larger than this formula here, this uh, function of n. And it can also be shown that this value here, for whatever value of n, is, is, is a little bit larger than 0.8 times n. Okay, so this is to say that for the merger to be profitable, the number of firms in the merger must be at least as large as 80% of the number of firms in the industry. Okay, so this is known in the literature as the 80% rule. Okay, so if you've got... Um, 10 firms in the industry, well, you need 9 of them merging for the merger to be profitable. Okay, if there are 20 firms in the industry, you need at least 17 of them to merge for the merger to be profitable. 
Okay, so basically, a large number of firms must be in the in the merger, and again, suppose that there are twenty firms in in the industry to start with, the merger would be profitable if at least seventeen of them are in the uh, in the merger, and so that would mean that after the merger, instead of having twenty firms, you would you would have um, eighty uh, sorry uh, three firms only in the industry. Okay. Um, Yep, uh, if 17 of them merge, uh, there are one merge firm and three, sorry, I was wrong, let me repeat, 20 firms uh, in the industry to start with, 17 of them merge. So how many firms are there left after the merger? There are three outsiders plus the, merge, the merged entity, so we are left with four firms. Okay, so this is to say that uh, as we said in the lesson on the previous uh, slide, the condition for a merger in a corner industry without any synergies to be profitable is that this merger results in a very concentrated market. In my example, you need to go from 20 independent firms to only four. So it's a huge increase in concentration. Okay, so let's illustrate all this uh, with uh, three firms. Okay, and consider firms 1 and 2 as the one merging. So let us look at the reaction functions uh, of the firms before the merger and from there define the Nash equilibrium. Okay, so take firm 3, this is the outside firm. Okay, um, it will react to the total quantity of firm 1 and firm 2 according to this reaction function. Okay, and similarly for firm 1, and firm 2. Firm 1 reacts to the total quantity of firm 2 and 3, and firm 2 reacts to the total quantity of firm 1 and 3. Okay, now I will represent this on a graph on the next slide, and I just want to, uh, to draw the combined reaction of firm 1 and 2. Okay, so I'm just adding up the two reaction functions which I have here, and if I do this, I have the, the total quantity of firm 1 and firm 2 as a reaction to firm 3's quantity, is given by this formula here. Okay. Now, if you solve the system of three equations in three unknowns, you're going to find that each firm at the Nash equilibrium before the merger is producing a quantity a minus c over four, leading to this profit here. Okay, with b for before the merger. Now, what happens after the merger? Well, firm three is still reacting to the total quantity of the other firm. Now, the other firm is not firm 1 and 2 separate, but firm 1, 2, which is the merged entity that firm 1 and 2 have formed. But if you look, you compare the two expressions here, um, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, whether firm 3 is facing two independent firms or one single firm, it still reacts to the quantity that is put by the other firms or the other firm on the market. Okay, so the reaction function, the way firm 3 reacts, hasn't changed. But the way firm 1, 2 reacts uh, to firm 3 is now given by this formula, which is different than the sum of the reaction functions of two independent firms. Okay, we have one half here, we had two thirds before. Okay, that also explains why the Nash equilibrium is different. Okay, we only have two firms on the market now. Each of them would produce a minus c over three, leading to this profit here. Okay, now if you compare the profits here and here, before and after the merger, you see that the profit of the merged entity, which is a minus c squared over nine, is less than the sum of the profits firm one and two were doing before, which is two times a minus c squared over 16, which is equal to a minus c squared over eight. Okay, so on the right hand side here we have a minus c squared over eight. On the left hand side we have a minus c squared over nine. So that shows that a merger of two firms within an industry of three firms is not profitable. Okay, so let me just confirm this on the graph. Okay, so I have Q3 on the vertical axis and Q1 plus Q2 or Q12 on the horizontal axis. As I said, the reaction function of firm 3 doesn't depend on whether uh, firms, firms 1 and 2 are separate or are merged. Okay? Uh, firm 3 takes the total quantity produced by rival firms as a given uh, and reacts to this. Okay? Now, what changes is the reaction function of firms 1 and 2 according to whether they are separate 
that would be this uh, uh, line here, which is, I repeat, the sum of the reactions of firm 1 and firm 2 to what firm 3 uh, produce. And after the merger, uh, so sorry, this is the equilibrium before the merger, and after the merger, well, the reaction function of the merged entity is on the left. So what does that mean? It means that for any quantity Q3, okay, so take Q3 here, if you compare the two blue lines, well, you see that after the merger, the merged entity is producing a lower quantity than, it, than it, the, the two firms were doing before the merger. Okay, so this is uh, graphically uh, the... Uh, illustration of the fact that when firms merge, they reduce the quantity they produce, okay, because they internalize the previous rivalry between them. Okay, so I repeat, that is shown on the graph by the fact that the reaction function of the merged entity is everywhere on the left of the sum of the reaction functions of the two firms when they were separate. Okay, but the reaction function of firm 3 hasn't changed, so the new equilibrium is where both firms reduce A minus C over 3, and we have computed on the previous slide that the resulting profits are such that the merger is not profitable. Okay, so in future presentations, we will see what happens when the merged entity has the potential to reduce its cost of production. Okay, and we will see that uh, the, this will no longer be the position of the reaction function of the merged entity if its cost has decreased. Okay, but we'll see this in another presentation. For this presentation, uh, this is all I wanted to say, and I thank you for your attention.